Hey there, folks. Jason here, Blue Label Bastards of Wargaming, and I will be something something if I didn't just record this whole video and only to find out that uh, I had the mute button on or something and it didn't go through. So um, I'm going to try to go through this probably a little bit faster than the last time I recorded it, which only benefits you because I'm a rambler. But anyways, um, I am on fire this week. This is my fourth video. And I hadn't planned on putting this out, but I got something in the mail today. And then if you and if you watched any of my last two videos, uh, my bolt action or hail Caesar vlogs, I posted some photography that I was not at all pleased about, and I had mentioned that I had ordered a light box after watching some videos on YouTube, most notably uh, Tabletop Minion Adams one uh, from a month or two ago on light boxes. And so I wanted to give that a go, and I got some feedback on some of the videos I put out. Thank you very much. It just so happened that a package came today uh, containing the light box. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of a hobby review of Neewers. I think I'm saying it right. Light box kit for taking better pictures of your miniatures. And just uh, to refresh your memory, these are some of the photographs I took of the bolt action uh, command group that I had painted up. And I, 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 you know, I, I think I did some things right. I used a daylight bulb. I attempted to um, remove that horizon line that a lot of people say to avoid. I used a white piece of paper. But still, I got a lot of weird light. Got some shadows. And didn't show the model off well at all. Or the flash would kick in and it would look extra special bad. Um, here's another example of one of the casualty markers from my Hail Caesar game. And, uh, tried to, you know, take the best possible photograph I could, but the focus just wasn't working. It didn't end up working right. It didn't show my, um, painting efforts in a way that I would have preferred. So, uh, moving forward, I came home from work today, and this was waiting for me. Uh, this was the, um... The light box it comes in a nylon bag and so as i started to unpack it open up the bag and on the lower right you've got the light box itself and then you've got four different colored kind of inserts you put inside the light box i didn't mess around with the blue red or black one i focused on the white one and so i went ahead and uh decided to unpack the uh the light box you can see the size of the table there and bam all of a sudden Jeez, this thing's huge. Um, I didn't pay a lot of attention to the dimensions that um, it was featured on Amazon. Uh, so it's a big light box. I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. So I moved it into my office because that's where my lamp was on the right there. You can see it. Problem being that the lamp isn't big enough to kind of put on top of the light box to kind of get an even distribution of light. That's what a light box does. And most setups you'll see, you'll have one, uh, two lamps on the side and one on the top. Uh, I don't have any ceiling lights in this room, so I tried to bring the lamp over on the other side. And, you know, this is my first go at it. Uh, so it's not perfect. You'll see that in the pictures, but uh, we press on nevertheless. So here's the white insert I was talking about. And this is one of the drawbacks I'll talk about um and and i'll show you how this kind of lays inside the light box but you can see it's pretty wrinkled and the whole point of a light box is try to get rid of those horizon lines that detract from your photography well if this is heavily wrinkled like this there's going to be some lines so what you do kind of do is you lay it in there and it's supposed to be more here it looks more of a abrupt transition you don't want those 90 degree degree angles you want like a gentle slope um, so you lay this in there and I adjusted it since then, but you still can see the fold lines on the, um, the inserts there. So then when I, I decided to plop a model in there and already, I think it looks better, but as you can see, um, the box is so big that if I put the model on the, uh, floor, I guess, of the light box, the lip of the, um, there's like a, a Velcro cover with a slit cut in it that if you really want to just have your camera poking through you can do that i took that off i didn't i didn't I'm not going that high speed just yet bottom line this box is so big i had to uh, raise up 
the model. So I got me a, a trusty Tupperware container and boosted it up a little bit. And then after this picture was taken, I kind of straightened it out as much as possible. And on the right, you can see the the light from the lamp that I turned to the side. On the left, you can see just my floor lamp and the different colors. And again, not optimal, but this was uh, the first time we're giving it a go. So uh, uh, went ahead and went for it. And uh, as a refresher, this was a picture of the model I took yesterday. Again, weird light, not showing the model very well. And here's what it looks like today. Not perfect, still a little bit dark. I need more light, but already I think the model shows up a lot better. You can see the different colors between the the model's uh, jacket and pants. You can see more detail on the sides there. You can see the pouches. It just shows up a lot better. Even in the background, you can see the lines, the, um, the fold lines I was talking about, but I think it looks a lot better than the other one. There's a good example of the different kinds of pouches and things that now show up, now show up reasonably well. Again, here's a refresher of a uh, the model I took a picture of yesterday, and here's what it looks like today. Um, looking at these photographs, I'm wondering, and, and I'll talk about this more later, being able to take better photographs does highlight some of the areas that you may not have caught when you held the model like right up to your face. This particular model's, uh, the way I painted his face, it looks splotchy in the photograph. And so I'm wondering if I was a little bit too abrupt, I rushed this model a little bit. I still think it looks perfectly fine, better than most tabletop stuff I've seen. But um, having good photographs does give you an opportunity to kind of be a little bit more critical in terms of your own painting. Uh, here is one of those casualties markers for my Hail Caesar uh, early Imperial Legion force. And um, if you remember back, I didn't put a photograph here. It just didn't show up well. This is a tough one to photograph because the soldier there is kind of leaning forward, maybe trying to keep his guts from falling out after getting stabbed in the chest. But I think it shows up a lot better here. Here's another one of the casualty markers. I agree with some commenters that said maybe the Warhammer Fantasy bases weren't the best thing to go on, but they're based and they're done, and I'm too lazy to go back and change them. But I think you can see here uh the better photography it's still too dark and i will work on getting a better lamp but i think it's 100 percent better than what i had before and the third marker and then what i decided to do was heck well i've got this thing out let's throw a couple other things in there and see how they photograph here's the tiger tank for my bolt action force and i think it came out looking pretty snazzy and my Warhammer Fantasy, uh, I wanted to, because this is so big, it can fit some bigger models in. So I want to put the War Shrine in there. This is, I think, one of the best fantasy models I've painted. And it looks pretty darn cool, I think. And then the last thing, this is the, probably the biggest model, non-terrain model that I own, is my uh, uh, Imperial Fists uh, Fire Raptor gunship for Warhammer 40k. It's a pretty decent sized model and it fits inside the light box with plenty of room to spare. Uh, so this is one of the benefits of having a, a large light box. You can get something like this in there. This I still think is a little dark and you can see the difference between the, the how the light is hitting the right side with the cockpit with my um, desk lamp kind of pointing right in and how that differs from the other side in the top. But still when you get right up close, I think a light box really shows off the model or can show off the model well so uh, after that I was done I put some stuff away and I realized that crap I still have to fold this thing up and get a this giant thing back in that little black box and for those of you that have either have these foldable wire sunshades or if you've got young kids like I do that get those play tents that magically pop up from a little bag into something huge like a Fosrix folding fortress, but only harder to put away. Uh, I wasn't too excited about getting this back together, and I did watch a couple YouTube videos on how to do it. Ultimately, I just kind of fussed with it long enough, and I got it back in the bag. So it does fold up. It, it is possible to get it back in the bag. I'm not going to say that it's easy. So what are my parting shots on this? Uh, Need Wars Lightbox Kit is an outstanding deal. I can't recommend it enough. Uh, first and foremost, the price point can't be beaten. It's about 14 bucks on Amazon, plus shipping if you have to pay it, but it's a pretty small box. 
Uh, it is a large light box. I, again, I did not pay attention to the dimensions of said light box, but because it's bigger, even if it takes up more room and you might have a hard time lighting it, uh, you can fit a lot of different stuff in it. If you are a small figure painter, you don't need a box this big. But if you're like me and you have all, models of all kinds of different size, maybe even some terrain you want to take pictures of, it's good to have a bigger box. Uh, the negative, it is cumbersome. It is kind of a pain to put it someplace where you can take photographs. And there are some wrinkles with the inner liner. Some other ones, I think, have more of a, a, a solid lining versus a cloth one that might be better. But for the price point, I can bust out the iron. And uh, if you're if you're extra nice, I may iron it next time. <laughs> Uh, some thoughts, make sure you have good light. I think you will agree that the photographs are a lot better. They would be even more outstanding if I had different light sources set up. And I might work on that. Just go down to Michael's or some hobby shop or wherever and get some cheap additional lights. We'll see. Uh, I would recommend watching YouTube videos. I'm Again, I'm going to post a link to uh, uh, Tabletop Minions thoughts on a light box. And uh, get a decent camera. I used my wife's uh, for these photographs, uh, but don't think that that was the primary cause of uh, the better looking pictures because I also took a few test shots with my iPhone, which I used previously, and the iPhone photographs look better. They're probably like an 85% solution to what my wife's, at this point, two or three year old Nikon something or other D3200. I'm not a, not a camera person. Um, they, it, most modern cameras will do just fine. But so you don't have to be over the top. But get a decent camera if you, or take advantage of a decent camera if you if you have access to one. But the bottom line is, uh, I think this is going to make light boxes like this are going to help most of us really show off our models to advantage on YouTube or word or sending them to friends or bragging or whatever. Uh, it does highlight some, uh, if you do have some deficiencies in your painting technique, it can show them up a little bit, but that's an opportunity to make things better. So I hope you appreciated, or I hope you liked this video. Uh, again, comments, criticisms, thoughts are welcome. You'll see more of the light box as I take photographs. Uh, you might even hear me complaining, trying to get it back in the bag, but at any rate, Hope you like this. Hope you're wargaming. Hope those dice are, are treating you well, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.